What's up kids, Mr. Murray here, Mr. Murray's Mathland, and we're uh, continuing on with our sketching graphs uh, series here. Uh, this time we are looking at a graph of f prime and trying to go backwards and sketch the graph of f. So that, that can be a little trickier, but it's really the same process, just in reverse, if you're comfortable with derivatives and what they represent by this point. So like my previous video uh, where we were taking f and sketching f prime, uh, I've got three different examples here of varying difficulty. So first is purely dealing with some, some line segments here. And so keep in mind that the derivative, right, represents the slope. That's the sort of number one thing people associate with f prime, the slope of f, the original. So what I have here is that this is a positive constant. You know, there's no scale again, so I don't know what this is. This could be 10 for all I know. It could be 100. It could be 2. But I do know that this other one, this negative constant, which I'm going to look at in a minute, is definitely further away from the x-axis. So, for example, if that were 2, this might be negative, I don't know, 6 or negative 7. Or if that first one were 10, this is going to be negative 20 or 30. Uh, but it's definitely less. So keep that in mind when you, when you do sketch these. Even though you don't have a scale, some things are relative. So if this first portion is a positive constant, say 2, like we said, then that must come from a line with a positive slope. So I'm going to draw a line segment with a positive slope, like y equals 2x. Now here's the thing with these. Uh, it could be like that. It could be like that. It could be like that. I don't know the vertical placement of these when you go backwards. And uh, if you think about why that is, you know, suppose you have y equals 2x plus 8 or y equals 2x minus 100, you know, uh, way down with the y-intercept they both have the same derivative of 2. So when you go backwards in the second half of the year, we, we talk about that's called integration or finding antiderivatives. When you go backwards, you know, we'll say, like, oh, y is definitely 2x, but plus some constant c on the end. That constant could be like a negative 100, could be positive 8, could be 0, could be nothing. So when you do these, the vertical placement doesn't matter when you go backwards. It might, you know, relative to other pieces in the thing, but this first one I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw a line segment with a slope, a positive slope. I have no idea how positive, but we'll just have this. And right to where it's in line with that hole. And maybe I'll just put a point there. Now, could the original have a hole in that, at that spot? Yes, it could, because if the original has a hole, the, the uh, derivative will definitely as well. Um, but sometimes they, these graphs were connected in the original, and their derivatives were not. So I think I'm going to go for that here. Okay, so that was some positive constant. Then this is a negative constant, which is, as we said, you know, much less or... or or bigger, the absolute value of it's bigger, if you want to think of it that way. So if this was positive 2, then this one might be negative 7 or negative 6. So I should be steeper in the negative direction. And you know I may not have uh, given myself the, the best starting point here. So I'll do this just to give myself a little more room. Here's my positive constant. And Maybe I'll even make it appear kind of flatter than I did originally. But I know my next piece is going to be uh, something with a negative slope, and it's going to be steeper. Something like that now. Sometimes people will try to make them connect to those spots, and that's totally fine if you want to do that. It doesn't really matter. And again, these two segments, there's nothing that says they had to be connected that I just drew. But I wanted to show that you could have them. But for all I know, they could be disjointed like that. And that would be just fine. So there's more than one way to draw a lot of these. And this last segment here has uh, f prime is 0, right? So I should be drawing a line with a slope of 0. And that means 
I should be drawing a horizontal line. And again, the vertical placement of it, could it really be here? Could it really be up here? Anywhere, as long as it's got a slope of zero. Could it really even be right on top of that? Could it be y equals zero? Yes. I'm going to just show that it could be connected to the original, but it doesn't have to be. So you could have something like that. And so there is f. OK, something like that. Those three pieces could be all disconnected, you know, discontinuous, or some of them could be connected, some of them could not be. Either or. Let's take a look at a polynomial uh, example. So again, this is f prime, and we're going to sketch the graph of f. Now, if you know how I do sketching the derivatives of polynomials, I usually start by, you know, finding those spots with horizontal tangent lines and making them zeros on f prime. So I'm going to do the same, but in reverse. I'm going to start with the zeros of f prime. So there's a zero of f prime. There's a zero of f prime. And there's a zero of f prime. And then let's try to figure out what do those represent on the original f. Do they represent relative maxes, relative mins? Neither, right? Because these are our critical points. So if you look at this uh, first one on the far left here, f prime is going from below the x-axis to above the x-axis. So f prime is going from negative values to positive values. This is kind of like you're looking at the graphic version of those number lines when we would test uh, doing the first derivative test. Uh, and so if f prime is going from negative to positive territory, that means your original is going from decreasing to increasing. So you've got yourself a relative minimum on f. So I'm definitely going to have a relative minimum lined up with this spot. Now could that be here? Again, the vertical placement of it, could it be there? Could it be there? Could it be up here? It could be anywhere. I just know there's got to be a relative minimum lined up with that x value. So you draw where it makes sense, and sometimes you have to erase, like I did in the last problem, to maybe make other pieces fit. But I think usually when I start with a relative minimum, I think I put it down. You know, so I'll have room to kind of go up from there. So to the left here, right, there's my relative minimum, and then I'm turning around, and now my f is increasing, and that's why we're in the positive territory. And then we've got another spot where f prime is zero. And this is one of those where the f prime graph bounces off the x-axis. So before that zero, f prime is positive, And after that zero, f prime is still positive. So you should have a graph of f that is increasing, and then flat, and then still increasing. So this is going to be a saddle point, like an increasing saddle point. Now, where does the vertical placement happen? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Wherever seems natural with the graph. So I think it kind of, the way I've started, maybe seems natural to be right about there. OK, so we've got that saddle point. Try your best to draw you know, a flat graph that then increases again. Then you start to take a look at where else you need to go, and you've got this last uh, zero right here, where f prime is going from above to below. So above to below, or positive to negative f prime, means your original graph should be changing from increasing to decreasing. You should have a relative max lined up with this. And you know the way my graph is going, it seems like it's going to happen up around this, this ballpark here. If you try to estimate where it might happen, you know, sometimes these look a little awkward and that's okay. I might even do a little erasing and kind of redrawing to make it happen a little more naturally. Okay, and that was the last critical number. That was the last zero on the f prime graph. So you should just be decreasing the rest of the way. And that is your f graph.
other little things you can do to, to check and you know kind of draw deeper connections here one the uh, f prime was a polynomial with even negative even negative n behavior right both sides were down uh, so if the derivative was even negative then the original function should be odd right because it should be one degree higher but still a negative coefficient so it should be odd negative and that's what we have up on the left down on the right odd negative n behavior here was another actually pretty important connection that that comes later on but it's if you can make it now all the better that those relative maxes and mins on f prime right the relative maxes and mins on f prime what do they represent on the original those should correspond or roughly line up with where the original is changing concavity right because if f prime is increasing and then decreasing and that means f double prime should be changing from positive to negative which means the original f should be changing from concave up to concave down and so the relative max here is the inflection point there concave up to concave down and it wasn't perfect but right in that ballpark this relative minimum you know be, was a saddle point and this was a special kind of inflection point right concave down to concave up this right here corresponds you know lines up with that spot on the graph and if you remember I had to stretch it a little bit but it does look like where that changes from concave up to concave down right around there and that's it and it never changes concavity again because f prime doesn't have another relative max or min so kind of cool just a little additional layer there okay last one and this is a, a kind of a weird one sometimes these these mess with your head a little bit especially when you're going backwards because uh, you see the cusps and, and people start to see cusps and say oh yeah the derivative is undefined uh, these spots but remember I'm not this thing already is f prime I'm not drawing its derivative if I were drawing f double prime then certainly f double prime you know doesn't exist at these spots but I'm trying to go backwards and draw f so take a look at this graph and notice f prime the graph you're looking at exists everywhere there's no holes there's no vertical asymptotes there's no breaks in this graph f prime exists uh, is continuous everywhere and that if that's the case if f prime is continuous then that means f is not only continuous but differentiable so the thing I'm going to draw when I draw f, whatever I end up drawing, has to be one continuous graph and has to be differentiable, meaning it's got to be smooth. So although these kind of appear like piecewise, like pieces jammed together, I'm going to try to draw originals that are jammed together but jammed smoothly. So that can be tricky to do sometimes with these. And that's why this is the third example. This is not the average ordinary problem. But let's try to take it uh, one thing at a time now if you start with the zeros on f prime you've got one there and that's it and you are going from positive to negative so that's going to be a relative maximum on f could be up here could be up here but maybe we take a look at what's what's happening over here with this now this has no zeros it's not touching the x-axis so if that's f prime and f prime is not zero and that means the original f is not flat at all no place where it's got a horizontal tangent line so let's just see what we do have one thing i, I for sure have is that f prime is above the x-axis this whole way and i'm going to fo maybe focus on this portion of the graph f prime is above the x-axis or positive okay uh, then that means f should be increasing everywhere so whatever I end up drawing it's got to be going up increasing but you might say well what's happening with this relative min and if you kind of caught what we talked about in the last example 
then let's think uh, to the left and to the right of that. Now to the left, f prime is positive, but f prime is decreasing, which means f is increasing, because f prime was positive, but the fact that f prime is decreasing, the fact that this graph is going down, means that f is concave down, right? Because if f prime is decreasing, its derivative is negative. That's the second derivative. That means the original is concave down. And then what happens in this little, for this little portion right here, is that f prime is still positive, but now it's changed to increasing, which means f should be still increasing, but changing to concave up. So we should have an inflection point on the original. What well, we said really in the last example, the relative mins and maxes on f prime represent inflection points on the original. So I'm going to have something that changes concavity at this x value from concave down. It's got to be increasing and concave down and switch to increasing and concave up. So, you know, that's hard to do. You know, it's, it's got to be kind of a subtle thing. I'll, I'll put it down here, maybe. So I should be increasing but concave down. And just, it shouldn't be a saddle point, though, because it shouldn't be flat because f prime wasn't zero. So there's increasing, concave down. You can see a little slight curvature. And then I'm going to change, I'm going to stay increasing, but change to concave up almost like the way like a tangent graph does. Or if you took a saddle point and kind of just stretched it upwards and downwards vertically so it was no longer flat in the middle. So I would say that right there, I can see that there's a subtle change in concavity, but the graph is increasing the whole way. Now, what's happening at that spot? So now I think I'll, I'll take away some of this, some of these little notes I was making. What's happening at that spot is f prime. Well, we did say that that over there did have a zero, so that's going to be a relative max on f, right? Because f prime is changing from positive to negative. Um, what's happening that whole time before that is that f prime is positive before that zero and decreasing positive and decreasing. So my F graph that I'm drawing, I'm currently in the process of drawing, should be increasing, which it, it is increasing. It's going to continue to increase. But now it should be concave down since F prime changed to decreasing. So again, it's a relative maximum on F prime is going to result in another inflection point. But again, I've got to do it smoothly because if F prime is continuous, which it is, right? There's no break there. I'm not drawing this thing's derivative. If f prime is continuous, then f should be differentiable. So right whatever you wherever you kind of ended off with this, you should again be increasing but switch back to concave down. So it's in one of those like kind of subtle shifts. We just shifted the concave up. We're going to shift to concave down, but still increasing. So you get that kind of weird little wiggle in there that we ended up drawing. And that would make sense because here is going to be a relative maximum. So where is that going to make sense with what I've been drawing? It seems like, you know, right around here, wherever you're headed, that should be the relative maximum. Might be a little higher or lower on yours. And then you're going to change to decreasing. And then you may notice that there's this shift where all of a sudden this line, and notice this was this f prime was decreasing the whole way, so I'm concave down the whole way uh, on my f. But then f prime is a negative constant. So when you do that by itself, it's not that, that big a deal. Uh, f prime being a negative constant means f is a line with a negative constant slope, right? So it would just be a line segment with a negative slope. However, you know, maybe it's like that, maybe it's like that, maybe it's like that. However, remember, because f prime is continuous, 
that means my original should not only be continuous but differentiable. So I've got to connect that line segment to what I've been drawing and I've got to connect it smoothly. It can't just be like that because if there was a cusp in the original there would be a hole in F prime. F prime wouldn't exist. So there can't be any cusps on the thing you're drawing and that is sometimes really tricky to do. You know, I've been doing these for years and I still will sometimes have to erase and, and sometimes it doesn't quite look right. So wherever you kind of end off, notice I've got some kind of negative slope right there at that moment. You want to just continue that kind of smoothly, but almost it becomes a line with whatever that, that negative slope is right there at that spot. So you just continue that slope out. That's that, that slope you're looking for and make that a segment there. And so it just kind of shifts from a curve to a line, but it does it seamlessly at that spot, no cusp. So you really get kind of a, a, a pretty awkward looking F, but notice there are no cusps on that original thing that I've drawn. There's one relative max because there was the one zero, but you do have a few changes in inflection, well, a couple. One there at that relative minimum, where F prime changed from decreasing to increasing, F change from concave down to up. And then another right here, F prime change from increasing to decreasing. So we change from concave up to concave down. And there you go. So that's a pretty tricky example there. And if you can handle that, you're really uh, in the zone. You're really uh, in good footing. Uh, but if you have trouble with that one, don't feel too bad either. It's not easy. So if you have any other questions or uh, comments, you know, feel free to let me know. But if you can handle the first two examples, you're pretty solid, especially that polynomial one. That's, that's good, solid graphing. But I, I like that third example. It ties together some, some deeper understandings. So hang in there and keep working hard, kids.